Good evening, viewers. It's that time of the week again when we showcase another Calypsonian on Calypso Showcase. Tonight we've got a show with a bit of a difference. The entire show tonight is going to be live as we feature a living legend in the Calypso world, the roaring lion, Raphael de Leon, also has been dubbed the walking encyclopedia of Calypso for his research that he has done in that area. I'm pleased tonight to present to you Raphael de Leon, the Roaring Lion, who will be tonight accompanied on some of the live songs he'll present by Clifford MacDonald, who has been working with him since the year 1941. Well, first of all, <coughs> welcome to Pixel <coughs> Showcase, mm -hmm. Raphael. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing that comes to mind is the name Roaring Lion. Did you get that from your association with your surname de Leon, or was that because of your ferocious strength or what? Well, two things I'll say here. Because in the first place, when I started to sing at the age of 18, my voice was very powerful. And an ex or resigned Calypsonian by the name of Poetical Harris, nickname, Nom de Plume, shouted, he's a little lion, raw lion. Mm -hmm. And that was the name. I didn't give myself a name. And uh, a couple of days later, I appeared in San Fernando, and on the pamphlet was the Roaring Lion. But I would like you to preface this lion business with not just Roaring Lion, but the royal Roaring Lion. <laughs> well, well, I know that you always well, had a fetish for singing with for royalty. The question of royalty. <laughs> from the, the, from the <coughs> queen yeah. all the way down to even the pope exactly. um, lately. So you always have a relationship with royalty. So you have yeah, some yeah, royalty yeah. in your blood, obviously. No, no, I have lots of that. You know. I can tell you that in a clip, if you wish. Well, why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, in due course. In due course. Yeah. Well, let's start at the very beginning. 1927, was it? 1927. What About got you on a stage? Yes, that's the first time I've been on a stage. What got you on a stage? What made you get uh, into I the I was Kalibzo? encouraged by some friends. Uh, 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 as a matter of fact, um, I was hook, hook, line, and sinker into selling, singing a Calypso. My friends who thought that I was able, who heard me sing between them and write calypsos, and always told me I was singing calypsos, which I didn't know then what a calypso was. Mm -hmm. And they encouraged me to go to a tent on Rison Road. It was the, uh, the, the leader of the tent or the host, and manager and all the rest of it, was a, a, a luminary calypsonian by the name of Douglas. Great Lord. Benefit. Douglas. And uh, while I was there, they told him that I can sing and wanted to sing. Now, traditionally, anybody who came into a tent and said they wanted to sing a calypso, unlike today when they would say you don't belong to here and you have no contract and all this stupidness, they allow you to sing. If you went over well, it's in the, it's in the interest of the tent. And then you become part and parcel of the tent. Well, when Douglas got up on the stage, hearing that, according to tradition, he went up and announced that this young chap, who is a great Calypsonian and all sorts of things, and he wants to sing a song. I didn't know they were talking about me. So therefore, I was watching to see who it was until he pointed at me and said, you. I said, me? He said, yes. And then, I don't know. I wanted the, the word to open because I really had no knowledge. I was shy, as it were. I was pretty young. Nevertheless, there was one Mrs. Plimmer. I think her daughter or granddaughter is still an optician. She was. And she came down and pat me on the shoulder and said, come on, we want to hear her, Sonny. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. And as a matter of fact, I went up. Having a knowledge of music, I called for the key I wanted, and I sang the song. And I won the competition. What was the song that you actually <coughs> sang? I sang about, having read a lot in those days about bastardy and fathers who would disown the children and whatnot. And I and they often home, and I sung a song. Mothers who can't afford to maintain their children as they ought to. <coughs> Mothers who can't afford to maintain their children as they ought to. Because the time is so very hard. The children father so very bad. So before you leave them to roam, send them at once to the orphan home. Well, I suppose the fact that I was a young fellow and so sympathy and thing went with mm. I won the, the prize. No, I and the competition was, was equivalent 
the competition was equivalent to what you call a King Calypso competition today. Yeah. So I won King from the first night. Right, well, from there, your popularity grew. <clears throat> Immediately overnight, the name was all over the place. A young fellow won the and that, they yeah. went to vote. For the benefit of our many viewers, can you tell us about some of the Calypsonians of that era that you rubbed oh, shoulders with? Oh, yes, yes. With? The night I met all, all the heroes, mm -hmm. Lord Executor, a giant, he was abroad forward from 1882. Uh, Munsi Daly, the only, the first and only Indian Calypsonian we know at the time, an ex collegian Douglas, who was the owner of the tent mm -hmm. and a star in the tent. What Very the good same singer. Calypsonian they call Railway Douglas? Railway, yes. Mm -hmm. That's the fellow. Chieftain Douglas, in other Chieftain words. Douglas. That's right. He, in Vigla, uh, a teacher Calypsonian, mentor, Lord Mentor from Belmont. Um, in Vigla, another fellow who was working also with Douglas on the railways mm -hmm. because Douglas was a clippy, you know, selling tickets and so. I think uh, in Vigla had to do with machinery and so he was some sort of a technician. Uh, and there might have been a few others that I can't call to mind right now. No, but you developed a relationship with a guy called Attila the Hun. Not then. Not I know, later on. Yeah. <coughs> How did that relationship come about? Well, I'll tell you. Having won the competition the night, overnight I became very popular. And Douglas told me, well, I have a good voice, I have a good future, but I'm afraid to use my voice because I'm shy. So I must forget that and just use the voice. And he said, would you like to sing with us in the competition San Fernando, Palace Cinema? Few days hence. I said, yes. I went down there and I also won the competition. And wherever I sang that year, I won all the competitions. And now this is something that record that was never broken by any Calypsonian. Mm -hmm. I won all the competition the first time I sang. All right, then I sang with him until 1932. We moved from there to Henry Street. When Reynold Wilkerson, a civil servant, who was the manager for Attila and others, in a tent they called Victory Tent, which at the time was situated in Nelson Street, he came to me and told me that he wanted me to sing with Attila. He introduced me to Attila. For some reason or the other, I thought, all right. And this was a marriage uh, that was intended to do great things. A marriage between Attila and myself, Calypso marriage. Because, this was 32, I sang again, I think that was the year uh, that there was a big fire, the rum born. When the rum born and the treasure reborn down, that sort of thing. Mm. <laughs> well, well, the thing I, want, I wanted to mention here, the concept of you and Attila working together mm -hmm. was called in those days a duet. It's something that we have seen little of in No, 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 that, that comes after. That comes after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You're so you're leading up to that? You are a little too quick. I'm premature. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> well, all right, you can use that word. It's a big word, but you can use it. Um, Attila and I got together in 32. We did very well. The union brought crowds to the tent, victory tent. Mm -hmm. In 33, they had again another giant competition, which was a carnival Sunday in San Fernando. And contrary to what people are thinking, the people who have really supported Calypso, who are really responsible for pushing Calypso and the Calypsonians, were the Indians, the Assyrians, the Portuguese, and the Creoles. Mm -hmm. One for them, Calypso might not have been anywhere. Because this show in San Fernando was sponsored by Rahamat and Company of San Fernando, fellow with a lot of stars. Right. On that occasion, I sang a song that brought down not just the house, but the tent. So much so that the next day, either the Guardian, but I more believe that it was the Gazette, came out with a headline, the lion roared and the tent fell in. I sang, it was on the wharf, 
San Fernando, where the bus, mm -hmm. where, where you can find the buses now. And I sang, I'm warning friend be wise, for heaven's sake, please take my advice. There is a lot to lose, for much depends on the one you choose. You love happiness, comfort in life, unity and a peace-loving wife. Which can only be if you observe my philosophy That if you want to be happy and live a king's life Never make a pretty woman your wife If you want to be happy and live a king's life Never make a pretty woman your wife All you've got to do is just as I say And you would be jolly, merry and gay That's from a logical point of view Always love a woman uglier than you. That yeah. was the song. Well, ugly woman is one of your trademarks. I mean, when we yes. think of lion, we think of that tune. Uh, but you must forgive me if I didn't follow my philosophy. <laughs> well, you, you, in fact, one of the things that I, I read about you was that beside having the name lion, mm. you always surrounded with a lot of lionesses. No, anyway, I had to. As a matter <laughs> of fact, um, I had a silver bracelet given to me in America. We're coming to that. And it was written, Lion, to the lion from his seven lionesses. Mm -hmm. I heard well, every time you walked in a, a party or a tent, there was at least five women on your arm. No, well, I mean, less than that would have been ri ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> However, we come back to the question of the tent. That was 32, 33 rather. Right. In the same 33 after the carnival season, the same Rahamatan company saw fit to organize an excursion to the, to the, to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. in which he selected the tiller myself, King Radio, and Beginner. Right. And a cross-section of the carnival bands between San Fernando and Trinidad, on board the SS Lady Nelson. All arrangements were being made or for pre-arranged shows in Grenada, Barbados, and St. Vincent. And we went through there on an excursion. We sang at Grenada, we sing at St. Vincent, and we sing at Barbados where we stood, stayed for 14 days. The show at the Queen's Park Hotel, I'm sorry, the Queen's Park Savannah, which was pre-arranged, pull a crowd. It was packed. Mm -hmm. There were police all around, but there were, of course, those who hadn't got money and wanted to hear. So they were jumping the fence. Mm -hmm. And there was always some argument between them and police. By that time, we were in the tent singing. I remember singing Ugly Woman. That is the only song that sang the night. <laughs> the crowd went wild. And something happened with the police, and the fellow got away from the police, and he started to run and run right in the tent. <laughs> and others came in, and there was a battle in the tent. I don't know how I got on the stage, but I found myself standing on the stage, and they were fighting with chairs. Chairs were broken up and a big thing. So it came to a premature ending. <laughs> and the next day, the papers had it. So that was the end of that. But we didn't mind because we had already collected the money. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Let me cause you for a minute because uh, we ought, we're going to be trying to cover a lot of your career but in the short time years. that we have tonight. Yeah. So we're going to be jumping a bit. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring you to a tune called Doggy Look a Bone, which you that was some greater. Right, and tell us about that particular tune, because that's one of the high points of your career. To be truthful, while I could remember is Doggy Doggy Look Bone. It's very difficult for me to remember the beginning no, of no, that. No, no, I, I want to know about the concept of you and Attila working the together, idea, because that, no, that, beside Doggy Look Bone, oh, oh, well, oh, yeah, good, all right. I sang the song as a result of a Grenadian folk song. Mm -hmm. It was a habit the Grenadian some kind of song they had in which they say doggy doggy look bone meaning if they didn't like a fellow and he came and things like that they right. made these remarks i wrote the song and this brought brings the honorable elsie hannas into the picture mm -hmm. the night that i sung it solo apparently it didn't click very well for some reason or the other i don't think people understood the idea this doggy doggy look bone hannas and prokop senior who was there together with Sinanan and these fellows and wooden. After we went to a downtown place where the lawyers and solicitors met, called 
Kong Tong restaurant opposite the market in Charlotte Street. Mm -hmm. And while we were there drinking, Hannah's remark, that song you sung tonight could be a hit. And I tell her, well, can't you see the people didn't take it? He said, but they could. Why not sing it in a duet? When he said that he couldn't get this girl, you tell him why he couldn't get the girl and things and like that. And what to do to get it. Exactly so. And mm -hmm. that is how it was born. Right. Now, that relationship blossomed and you went further on. And I want to bring you now to, to your travels abroad because I see you as a person who at, from that early era was able to go out into the markets of the North America, Europe, South America, and take Calypso to the world. Tell us about that aspect But do you know something? Life. You stopped me right at the point where I was going to make that? Yes, I, know, I know you're making a criminal point <laughs> there, yeah. but you see, from I'm trying to give the, the viewers a concept of the total oh, right. contribution you have made to this art form Good. in your career. Well, from 1933, after we came back from the excursion, it inspired the honorable, I use the word honorable, mm -hmm. Sargoms, Eduardo Sargoms, a Portuguese who came all the way from Madeira. He chose as a legal advisor the Honorable Elsie Hannes, a Calypso fan, mm -hmm. who invited him into the same victory tent in 1934. He, having heard the Calypsonians, and seeing the crowd that attended the Calypso, remarked to Mr. Hannes, or rather asked, whether they have recordings of these, and Hannes told him no. He said, but if the people will come to the tent like this to listen, and they are so happy about it, they would buy the records. And there is where the idea of mm -hmm. sending us to America was born. Mm -hmm. And Sargums decided to send us in 1934. You worked with Decca Records, was it? No. The first time we went, we worked with the Brunswick Recording Company, which mm -hmm. was one of the biggest companies. Right. One Mr. Perez was the big man there, mm -hmm. a Puerto Rican. Well, there is where Calypso began to go places, began to go places for this reason. The idea between Sargoms and the uh, Brunswick Company was to push Calypso farther afield. <laughs> so since the Brunswick Recording Company was a big company and had control of quite a lot of the Hollywood movie stars and singers, stage mm -hmm. singers, they were in a position to arrange shows to get us in the midst of these movie stars. So the first thing they did was to get us to arrange for us to appear as a guest artist to entertain the uh, President Roosevelt, the President of the United States, Delano Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It was in a place where the colored people didn't used to sing, or poor people. Mm -hmm. It was for the elite class and the Hollywood class and the Wall Street class. It is known as the Waldorf Astoria. And the famous room there for entertainment was the Grand Ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria. Mm -hmm. What songs did you sing at those ah, days? Ah, well, you're coming to that. I'll give you. <laughs> and something more. So we went there. And there I met and was introduced to President Roosevelt and the First Lady and lots of other movie stars, uh, Bing Crosby and Bob Crosby and Stephen Fetchett and all these people, uh, Rudy Valley and us. When we were introduced to him, when I was introduced to him, we, Attila was introduced first and I after. Then the leader of the band was Gerald Clark, a Trinidadian. And Roosevelt asked where these boys are from. And Gerald Clark said, from the Isle, where the sing Calypso. Roosevelt repeated, from the Isle, where the sing Calypso. I said, no, sir, from the land of the Calypso. I said that jocularly. And he said, from the land of the Calypso. I said, but a week later, when I appeared at the Broadway, I mean, I'm sorry, the Hollywood Cafe in Broadway, which was 
own and run by a famous movie star, Rudy Valley. In lights, we appeared, the boys from the land of the Calypso, and hence the new one, the land of the Calypso was born. Hmm. Prior to that, here was called Little New York, or Little America, mm -hmm. by all the Caribbean people. Give now, us a taste of one of the tunes that you sang in that, at that time. You mean when I sang for Ruzad? Yes. I sang Ugly Woman. You sang Ugly Woman yeah. at that time. Yeah. Now there were two or also three um, Ugly Woman. movies that you did around that time. You did Happy Go Lucky. No, no, no. No, you're born far away. Happy Go Lucky is in 41. 41. Yeah, yes. You, I, you, know we, I know we, we're traveling very slowly, <laughs> but I want to, to but show you, the you, public. You're not only traveling, <laughs> you're jumping. <laughs> <laughs> you're missing a lot of important things. Yes, but we don't have much time to, to well, give Well, give me a couple of years to talk. Well, but we'll bring you back, but we want to give the, the, the public <laughs> a little synopsis <laughs> All right, go of, ahead. Your, of your life story. I'm so going to tell give us you some about, so, so, you know. Well, I want to get a few. Yeah, now. but you see, I want to bring it in the right place. Well, but we, do, we don't want to run out of time and then find that we haven't given the public I don't think everything. I've been talking for one hour, five minutes, you know. You've been talking for at least 20 minutes already. Well, we're going good. <laughs> you know what is 20 in Weiwei? Yeah. Dog. All right, let's go on. <laughs> Take it from there. All right. We appeared there, appeared at Hollywood Cafe, then appeared at Carnegie Hall. Now, mm -hmm. these, what are the places I'm talking about, we're the only Calypsonians who have appeared there at that time. I don't know about after. Mm -hmm. Then we sang on WGY. A million, a billion dollar business, Fleischmann's East. Then WEAF, then the National Broadcasting Station. All this was in, a gimmick intended to popularize Calypso. Then we sung, when we sung uh, on WEAF, it was beamed to Trinidad and the Caribbean and South America. And on that night, Trinidad was like a carnival Monday. You could look back in your papers and see. People were running all about to hear us sing. And we hadn't got this amount of news media and radios. So wherever there was a, a, a radio, people were there, flocked, all Nelson Street, Dongwood, book all about. Mm -hmm. There were crowds of people like a carnival. This is a fact. This is no yes. joke. Mm -hmm. It has never happened before, nor after. And they had bad weather, but many people had heard it. This was the... After that, we came back to Trinidad. There is another force and another record breaking. They built a tent on St. On uh, Vincent Street. Um, I'm sorry, St. Vincent Jetty to welcome us. They invited the news media, and there were hundreds of people there to welcome us. Along with that, we had records sent down in advance. Sargums had vans with loudspeakers, and we traveled through from here all down to San Fernando. Shagwan us all about playing records, which popularized them. Yes, now, exactly. these are records that no Calypso ever broke. Are, I'm making this clear. Yes, sir, we're following Good. you. So where do we go from here? From here? Well, I could go on. I just want you to, to know if you want to say something. Otherwise, from there we move. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about 1934. From 1935, I was engaged to sing on a tourist boat. I think I'm the only Calypso at that time and maybe nobody after has been engaged to sing on a tourist boat. There's where I got the opportunity to carry Calypso to South America. Because we went straight up to Paramaribo, Suriname, and sang at pre-arranged shows at a place they call the Palace Hotel. And from there, we come back down into Georgetown, where I sang at the ZFY broadcasting station. And then I came back and go across to Caracas, where I sang on a hotel up on the mountain up there. And so Calypso went to South America through me, because Attila was not doing shows. Mm -hmm. That year, I didn't go to America because I couldn't. I was on contract. In 1936, in 1935, I need to say, road march people take or put out three, four more rats, and they call them road march king. I've been putting out road march from 1934 until I left here in 1951. Mm -hmm. Every year, sometimes two in one year. Road marches like Sally Water, Whoopsin, Whoopsin, Netty, Netty, Fun Miss Aga Boy. Whoopsin, Whoopsin stands out as one of your big ones. Can you remember anything about Whoopsin, Whoopsin? Uh, but, but, but I mean, this is one thing I always do, remember? Well, give me a little piece Have of... Have you not heard the gossip and the rumor going around? It's all about men and women that we now have in the town. It's all about Texas of a free-to-play game. 
It's rumored around. I hear the talk. I'm afraid to call the name. What is the goddess do, Remy? Yes, the whoops in fa, sola. They polish in whoops in whoops in. Lati do any pot for soda rain. You hear the talk, do, Remy? Yes, the whoops in fa, sola. They polish in whoops in whoops in. Lati do any pot for soda rain. That's just it. I remember that that road match actually went from one year into the next but that year. But all the time is the first Calypso. That mm. brought about a dance they call whoopsin. Mm -hmm. But you know, they don't remember these things, but mm. they don't want to remember. That's another story. <laughs> Have we gone back to where I was before? Right. All right. So, in 1935, I brought out Sally Water. That's while I was on the ship. Mm -hmm. For the carnival, I brought out Sally, Sally Water, <laughs> sprinkle mm. in a saucer. Rise, Sally, rise, Sally, 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 what? A bounce up with a girl, she was a wealthy dame. You can imagine how the lion made his name. Up with a girl, she was a wealthy dame. Imagine how the lion made his name. She said she loved me, she is so confused. Ask for a gift, what you think I choose? I choose Sally, Sally, water. Sprinkle in a saucer. Rise, Sally, rise, Sally, 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 what? She said, I love you, I said, I love you too. I would like to play a game of bat and ball with you. She said, I don't think you can clean ball me at all. I said, paper break your wicked please, don't you ball. She said, the price for the one who makes the high score, I won. What do you think I asked her for, for her? Sally, Sally, water. Sprinkle in a saucer. All right, Sally, right, Sally. Sally, Sally, water. If I go on, I wouldn't be able to talk. <laughs> but you know, this is the first Calypso that has been really banned, along with Neti Neti. Mm -hmm. Because, what do you think I ask her for, for Sally Water? There? Yeah, uh, yeah. But this is a no And you're a person who actually, later on in your life, condemned that type of Calypsos. No, but you see, th th this was double and tan. Yes, uh, this is what the people what, wanted. No, but this is what you could think what you want. I talking about a no I'm Sally, Sally Water, yeah. Sprinkle. Children used to play that, mm -hmm. but they wanted to say what they think. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't blame them. Double and tan, just yeah, call exactly. it. Exactly. So anyhow, this was a road march, mm -hmm. 1935. Then 1936, mm -hmm. it was sung. Road march. The 1937 was 1990. They banned that too. And throw it overboard when the records came here. Netty, netty. Yeah. A lot of people can This had to do with a girl of easy virtue mm -hmm. and her hombre douce or dudu man mm -hmm. who she took care of. And something happened and she was expecting baby and whatever it is. It happened in Mangro Rose Yard. That is at the head of Nelson Street. When you cross the bridge, that bridge, Nelson Street mm -hmm. and Duke Street, right. a yard there now that they have got housing and planning. That was Mango Rose. Mm -hmm. And I sang from what I've heard, Neti, Neti, give me the thing that you have in your belly. Neti, Neti, Give me the thing that you have in you. Christmas night almost died with love, lying in my bed with a high brown crop. Christmas dead almost died with love, lying in my bed with a high brown crop. I heard a gin bottle with a wicked roll. A tambo woman nearly made me lose control, singing Neti, Neti. Well, they banned that. They say, it. I shouldn't say, give me the thing that you have in your belly. <laughs> now, what is it they're saying today? Well, up to today, people still sing Neti, Neti. Yeah. But, but it was a road march. Mm -hmm. There were two. This same Neti. Because the same netty, immediately after, in 1937, immediately after the carnival, an excursion was given to Grenada, in which people from San Fernando and over went. I didn't go, mind you. And when they reached, they landed at 10 o'clock on one of the lady boats in the morning. Tambu Bambu, not steel band. Mm -hmm. And when they got there, they started singing the road march, neti neti. But they clashed at that hour with a procession, the Roman Catholic procession. And um, naturally, there were those in the procession who wanted to hear neti and they jump over. Mm. So it sort of uh, broke up the, dan 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 the thing. And the next day, Marichaud's paper, that is the famous politician they had, cut us to ribbons here. Mm. And then, 1938, I replied. No, I'm sorry, 1937, I replied. An excursion given by well-known Trinidadians. 
was highly criticized by Grenadians, and his caution given by well-known Trinidadians was highly criticized by Grenadians. We did sing a song, but not the one they say. Neither did we sing it in a vulgar way. We sang, can't stand the digging, baby, the bop, me bop, me shilling, but we didn't sing. Netty, netty, give me the thing that you have in your bed. We landed by the jetty very merrily. We were singing our songs quite happily. And as we were about to strike up our bamboo band, a procession was approaching very near at hand. Smith gave the command to strike a tone. Grenade and started running madly from their homes. And everybody was singing what they sang. Can't stand the digging, baby, the bop, give me back. Me shilling, but we didn't sing. Netty, netty, give me the thing that we have in your bed. Now, what is funny about this? They banned the song, and when I sang that, they passed the record. <laughs> the, <laughs> the same thing given to the them same thing was in a different way. <laughs> okay. What we want to do, Roaring Lion, because we have some callers out there who are anxious to converse I'm with ready. you in between. Yeah. So as we go on talking about your career, we will invite callers to call in and chat with you or yeah. ask a question or make a comment. Wonderful. But meanwhile, we'll continue talking about your career until the, call, the first call comes yeah, in. Yeah, well, I, to, um, I reached 1937. Mm -hmm. uh, 1938, uh, the one folk come kill me. You heard mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I know that. Ask no question, but I wouldn't sing it. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I had that on the road. 1939, Poland, Poland, Roman, he invaded Poland. That's when England entered the war. Right. And I sang the song. All these are road march I'm talking about. Coming back now, I missed this. Whoops in, well, you heard that already. That was One minute. We already got a caller from Dego Martin. So All let's right. hear what this caller yeah. wants to know. <coughs> Good evening, Dego Martin. Good evening. Good evening, Alvin. Yes, I'm hearing you. Lion. How are you guys doing? We're hearing you loud and clear. Go ahead. Um, well, firstly, I would like to commend the Rowan Lion for the very fine job that he has been doing for so many years. Um, I know that a lot of the younger Calypsonians may not even remember the first tune that they sang. And it is quite refreshing to see a man of his, of his age and stature recalling all these dates and names and, and stuff like that. So I'd like to commend him on, on, on that very fine job that he's doing in the field of research and I hope that um, before the day is done that he would be able to get all these, this information on record so that the younger Calypsonians and the historians to come would be able to benefit from the very fine work that he's doing. Thank you very much. Well, one of the things I'd like to say right away is that there's no way that we're going to have you on one Calypso showcase. In fact, I, I can see that we will need probably every three months or so to bring you back to update us as to different aspects of your career. I can, I can make it easy for you, no? <laughs> I talk for a year. <laughs> ah, straight here. Yeah, straight we put you yeah. on for 1992. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, one of because the things that... Because there's a lot of things that I can't possibly talk in a half in an hour. Perhaps for the benefit of that view, we could mention that in fact, Warren Land has written a book uh, on the Calypso from France to Trinidad, 80 years of history. 800 years. 800 years of history, which deals with the birthplace of Calypso and the, ev the evolution up to our time and what he considers to be truly Calypso as opposed to what some people have interpreted. This could take about three or four shows in itself, so we won't get into this tonight except to say that he has documented a lot of what we are talking about. Is it all right for me to mention Oh, feel that? free, yes. I've also practically finished my autobiography. I have finished The Origin of the Steel Band, and I have written Legends of Trinidad on Sukuyas and Lazarus and all that. Fantastic. The only thing, reason why it is not published as yet is whereas abroad, 
if you have written a book that a publisher thinks is worth it, he doesn't only publish it, but he gives you an advance royalty. But here, you have to advance them, and you're not sure when you're going to get a book. That's what I have to say. That's all holding you back. <laughs> but we have a caller from Laventil. Good evening, Laventil. Oh, good evening. I want to congratulate Mr. DeLeon, man. He looked refreshing as a youth still, and singing that um, whoopsin, whoopsin, man. And a song that my grandfather used to speak about, you know. But the main thing I wanted to ask was about his autobiography, and well, he mentioned it there that he almost finished it, but the Roaring Lions should say how long again. Anyway, he wants to know how long, it, um, how long again before your autobiography will be ready? Well, I should finish that within a matter of... Presently, the reason why I haven't completed it is because <laughs> I'm an agent for lottery and it takes up my time. But I am trying to finish it. it can, I can finish it within a matter of about a month. Once I get the time, you know, that's the important thing. All right, we've got a caller from Mova. Good evening, Mova. <coughs> yes, good night. Lion, I must congratulate you on how well you can rhyme. And I have a question for you now. Um, I read one of your articles in the newspapers and you said that Calypso should be eight lines for the verse and four lines for the chorus. Could you please explain me the significance for this? Thank you. Well, we were hoping not to get into that because no, that could take you the whole show. But it's explain to her what you meant by Calypso being eight lines verse and four lines oh, chorus. Oh, well, good. That's simple. The fact is this, that since it was created in 1295 by Francois, not, I'm sorry, not Francois, but Guillaume de Marche in North Province of France, he who created it, decided that it should be written in that form. Eight lines to the verse, four, four lines. lines to the chorus. Now we come a little later on, apart from 1295, we come back to, to, to 1431, where you meet another troubadour, mm -hmm. following in the footstep, wrote the same thing. He is uh, Francois Vion, a Frenchman again. He wrote the same thing, same eight line to the chorus. It, I think it's called uh, something to my love. But it's eight line to the verse, four line to the chorus, which incidentally in French is called envoy. He had either E N V O Y or E N V O I. E N V O I. Um, if you go to the, come back and go into America, now the, the French took it to Arcadia in 1605. They took it there. A handful of people went across Frenchmen to develop Arcadia, which was undeveloped then. It was something like Australia in its days. And uh, uh, I think it's 70, 175 years later, the English invaded them when there were 18,000 people at the time. And having invaded them, they won, naturally. And they exiled most of the French people for fear of underground movement. And they went further north. And these people carried it with them. The French always carried it, the, 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 the uh, culture with them. And you would find it, you can find it rampant during the American revolutions. And in my book, I have shown lots of the American songs that identify itself with the, the exact form. Even what you sing there, the, 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 the thing. Mm -hmm. This is, is a calypso. Incidentally, it was popularized by a gospel singer. Yeah. Um, I, re I read where you said even stand up, stand up for Jesus is a yeah, calypso. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are calypsos. But they, they call them ecclesiastical songs mm -hmm. with the same calypso. Because, because of the form. In the ecclesi ecclesiastical songs were brought in by the Frankish, Frankish troubadours in about uh, the 5th or 8th century. Mm -hmm. uh, the Frankish troubadours, that's it, the 5th or 8th century. They were singing ecclesiastical songs because, and then, the same songs were taken in about the 9th to 11th century and were used in the form of what they call chanson de jest or songs of heroic deeds. Now, the Frankish troubadours' songs dealt with uh, saints, it was singing about praising the saints and so. Mm -hmm. But the Frank um, Chanson de Jess were praising. It was uh, the time of the um, w when they were fighting uh, between the, themselves, these uh, prince and kings and whoever it might mm -hmm. be, were fighting between themselves, and they call it songs of heroic deeds. It was only about war. So to, to answer the the, the caller's question about the, it's, you are saying it's the form it's that the form. makes it Calypso yes, it's, it's more than form. anything else. It is the form. Mind you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your writing. No, mind you, Calypso 
is, whole, is, a, is poetry, and all songs are poetry. In the first place before the troubadours gave it any name, it was called verse. All ra songs were called verse. But there's nothing wrong with writing. But you see, if we continue to write and call everything by the same name, this is what would happen. Years to come, your great-grandchildren wouldn't know what is what, composed by whom and when. Because you can say, as I've told you, the Frankish troubadours in the fifth century wrote about songs of the uh, deeds of the saints. And then the chanson is just about heroic deeds. And then in the 14th century, the 13th and 14th century, they wrote the sonnet and the virile and the lay and things like that. Now we know this because they gave a name to it. And it's why our father in heaven was so smart that he told Adam to name all the fruits and animals. Otherwise, when a lion bites you, you would say it's a Santa Pete. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll pick up from there. Join us um, later for On Calypso Showcase. Welcome back to Calypso Showcase, and we have a call on the line from Arima. Good evening, Arima. Yes, good evening. Yes, speak up, please. Yes, good evening. Are we hearing you? Yes, good evening. Um, good night. Good night, everyone. I always wanted, I'm one of the younger ones, and old folks used to be always telling us about these um, long-time Calypsoonians, some in the past, now, the great kings and the road max kings and such as. But I always wanted to be become a Calypsonian, and I would like to ask the Royal Lion, as one of my special artists, what, what must I do to learn this art form? What must I do? Because I really would like to become one and start an extra, a, a, extra activity in a, in a, like a career then. This is one of the younger viewers, and he wants to know from a person like you, with your experience, mm -hmm. what does he have to do to really become a Calypsonian? What does he have to do to get into this art form? Mm -hmm. Well, there isn't much to it, you know. A, you must like it. B, you must want to know what it is all about, how it is written, and things like that. That is all. You don't need anything more than that. If you like the Calypso, if you like Calypso, you will attempt to write it. So it's important that you get to know how to write it. That is, if you really want to write Calypso, and not what people write any nonsense and call it Kaiso and Kaiso and all kind of nonsense. If you want to really know it, you must know the history of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is very important for this reason. When you become a Calypsonian, whether you know it or not, you'll find lots of people who run into you asking you questions about it. What is a Calypso? Foreigners, you might run into a group of foreigners, and they say, you're a Calypso, sing a song, and you sing it. That's all right. Then they say, but what is a Calypso? Why this and why that and the other? No, it has every reason. That's why I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. so that you can know what you're talking about and not to talk nonsense like what people are saying. Right. You must be able to say what you mean, mean what you say, and prove it. What, where does ex tempo fit into all of this? <clears throat> ex tempo is different to what I hear people singing today. Ex tempo is not what they're singing. You see, ex tempo confines itself to what is known as war. The same war is also called fatigue, which is a French word or not to be confused in English with being tired and it was also called um, it's, it's also called wisecrack and it's the uh, American version. Oh, wisecrack, yeah. yeah. What you do is Can you give us a little example? Yeah, but, but give me a chance, let me develop my point. Mm. <laughs> when you talk about singing impromptu, it was confined to two things. It was confined to war, which you had to sing in those days after a show. When a Calypso show terminated, the finale was war between the Calypsonians. Mm -hmm. Fatigue. You tell him this and you tell him that. You don't tell the Calypsonians sing about a plant or sing about guitar. It's war, real war. Don't even sing the war melody tunes here, because 
You don't tell a fellow if you're going to fight, you don't tell him, well, don't use an axe, use a knife. He use what he wants and you use what you want. A war of us would be, <coughs> no, 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 tell them I say no, minor. My answer is no. No, 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 tell them I say no, that my answer is no. No, 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 tell them I say no, that my answer is no. They may come with a grand preparation, no, 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 no. No consolation would be grief and pain and sad meditation. Then a fellow will come up on the stage. Let us assume it's me. Mm -hmm. They call me up. So I sing. They say, you can on your gun for one. The moon has all around that the lion is not what large in the tongue with fury in his eyes. He really means to slaughter a pretender who he may slay or devour so run quickly and notify the government. On havoc and destruction, the lion mine is bent. Should I encounter opposition, I'll decrease his congregation. That is war. A mm. fellow may come up and answer to that. Eh? Right. And say, men like you who are corrupted and defiled with such dangerous diseases, where you should be exiled. I'm going to see the city council to have you fumigated, the company of men. You should be isolated. Diseases that marasm is poop and consumption, and to seek to affect even your fifth generation. So you should be burnt as a protection to the present congregation. Another fellow might come in. Your English is poor, your sentence is weak, your vocabulary limited, and you are a freak. All your words are always of one syllable. Educationally speaking, you are very people. Your behavioral pattern shows you lack dignity. In fact, it also shows you have a low mentality. I tell you, no, you can't sing extempo calypso. That is war. <laughs> that real is real war. war. I would have five or six men I in the tent. You to hear what I've got to say. Thinking. Tell me if you like it this way. <laughs> I want you to know if you didn't know. I am the king of Calypso. Listen to me when I start your rhyme. Clifford, please play your guitar in time. Mm -hmm. Whenever I sing, they always call me the Calypso King. That's the war. All right, let's take in a call who's been uh, no, holding on for I'm a long nonsense. time. Good evening, Tobago. Hello, good afternoon. <coughs> We're hearing you. I like to wish this to the um, Ryan oh. all the best in this Calypso. I've been listening to him for a long time. And I love the way he sings. And I would like to wish him all the best and wish him that he may live to sing many more Calypso as he do. I like to wish him a happy Christmas and a happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. A caller from Tobago wishing you that you continue singing as all these good songs that you have sung in the past and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. I'd like to tell him I'm the first one in Calypso in Calypso too. Right. In, in Tobago. Right. Mm -hmm. We have a caller coming, standing by. <coughs> Karanaj. Good evening, Karanaj. Hello, good evening. Yes. Uh, Alvin, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. All right. First of all, I'd like to... All praises to Calypso Showcase, first of all, for bringing people like Roaring Lion into the forefront of things. I would highly recommend, commend, and praise the Royal Lion, a hero, a true hero of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I wish him all the best for the rest of his life, his continuation or completion, rather, of his book. And I would like to ask you if you can give us some ideas as to where we can get the two books, uh, the Autobiography and uh, Calypso, 800 Year uh, History. 800 year history. Um, that's basically it. Well, long live Calypso Showcase, long live the Roaring Lion. The One Calypso France to Trinidad is available at most of the, the book um, shops in Trinidad already. The autobiography he's still working on and may be out within another month or two. Mm -hmm. um, so we keep, we keep um, our eye out for that. And if we hear anything about it, we let you know on Calypso Showcase. Thank you for your kind comments. And we hope we can keep bringing interesting um, Calypsonians to uh, the, the forefront on this program. Uh, we have Diego Martin on the line. Good evening. Uh, good afternoon. Good night, in fact. Yeah, how are you? I'm fine, I, thank you. Yeah, We're I have you. a comment. I only hope that the people who are given doctorate listen to a rolling lion. And I hope that they take into consideration that he is not only a doctor in Calypso, 
They should give him masters of Calypso. That's all I have to say. You got that one? No. Someone was saying that when they're giving out doctorates in Calypso, that they shouldn't only give you a doctorate, they should give you a master's, because you're very outstanding Thanks in your very knowledge much. of the art. Form. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Well, the two songs that I believe the public would associate with you and would like to hear, and I want you to give them one of them now, which is the Hipney Rice. Oh, yes, yes. yes. And we can hold back the other word for that. I'm here to do that. <coughs> but I would like to sing Caroline after. Well, we'll hold Caroline for, the, for a little later, for when we're closing the show. Oh, well, okay, good. Thought you were going to say we shouldn't sing it? No. Now, this song has to do with... It gives you an idea of the Calypsonian thought in those days. They recorded everything, hence the reason why they were called uh, First with the News, instrument of education and information and all the rest of it. This is what happened in those days of the depression. Even though it was the depression, the money mm -hmm. had more buying power than what you have today. <clears throat> and the chorus would be, ah, they used to sell a hipney rice, hipney black eyed peas, hipney lard, hipney bread and cheese. And if you bought bread, and couldn't buy cheese, then you beg them for a piece of salt fish, please. Hape me rice, and then you hape me black eyed peas. A hape me lard, and even a hape me bread and cheese. Hape me pudding, hape me everything. Put over the. You may scoff, you may scorn, argue and carry on about the days we know call by gone. Talk about depression and economic plight, and to some extent you'll be right. But there was food in Galore and the prices weren't high, so the poor was able to buy. Well, no, you might be amazed, but there is nothing but praise in my heart for those good old days. They used to sell hipney rice, hipney black eyed peas. Sing out there, hipney bread and cheese. And if you bought bread and couldn't buy cheese, then you beg them for a piece of salt fish, please. Hipney rice, hipney black eyed peas. Bread and cheese, hipney pudding, hipney everything. <laughs> now everything in those days, ah, uh, everything in those days to wear and to eat was ridiculously cheap. Even the ladies wearing them nicely used to do so cheaply. The minimum charge was a shilling an hour, the maximum one dollar, but for that you could have jack up the car, puncture the tire. The carburetor, because they used to sell the hip, the rice, and then the hip, the black eyed peas, a hip, the lard, and even a hip, the bread and cheese. And if you bought bread and couldn't buy cheese, you beg them for a piece of salt, please. Hip, the rice, and then you hip, the black eyed peas, hip, the lard, and even a hip, the bread and cheese, hip, the pudding, hip, the everything. Right, let's take Lavantil now. Good evening, Lavantil. Yeah, I'm Captain Chariot, you know. I'm a, I'm a reggae artist, but I also love Calypso, I love pop jazz, you know, and I love originality, and I think we're in that, you know, I think he's an original artist, you know, Right. and I think he's good, and I think he should go ahead with it and don't give it up, because it's a work of art, you know. Thank you very much. Okay. Right, he was making the comment that he considers one of the most original artists that he's ever heard. I'm very thankful. Well, let's take another call from Freeport. Good evening, Freeport. Uh, good afternoon. Um, first, I'd like to say good night to um, the Royal Lion. But what I would like to ask him is why it is um, he always been criticizing the nowadays Calypsonian, especially the younger ones that were coming up, knowing that um, the times have been changed, right? There's a difference between long time singing from all um, the years he called by that going through. I know that um, we have a difference in singing with Calypso. Where the music is concerned, the lyrics and everything. And I find his objective though, towards objecting the new trend of Calypso to the long time Calypso, especially together with Kitchener. I find that is very wrong because if you check now, nowadays people really, they don't keen to listen to the long time Calypso, except all right, we got, the, we got the message, so let's see what, how Lion responds. What he's make, the point he's making is that he finds that you're very critical 
of some of the younger Calypsonians and the, let's say, the changes they have put into the Calypso singing? How do you respond? Well, to begin with, I think he misunderstood what I'm saying. For the simple reason, I am not being critical of the Calypsonian. I had, I had uh, prefaced what I had to say about that with these words. I have no objection to people writing what they want. Of course, you want to be versatile. You want to be creative. And we welcome anything that anybody could write. What I am saying is, when you write something, you must define it, identify it. People must know what it is you wrote, how it should be written. You, don't, you can't call a balanjan a mango. You can't call a mango an apple. And if you eat, I mean, of course, look, fruits are growing on trees. They hang from a stem. Most of them have seeds, but you don't call orange a shaddock. They are two different things. All they I want them to do is identify this song is called basket, and it must be written in this form. So you don't mistake the basket with the bag. As I have said before, otherwise when a man run into a lion, he would go back and say it's as if a, 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 a jaguar. You must give it a name or for posterity, for All the right. future of We're people. We're running out of time, so we're going to take one call, because I think you've made the point. Yeah. Call what you're singing and let people know what you're singing. That's the point you're making, right? Yes. Let's, let's take this caller from Shaguanas, and then we'll get Caroline. Shaguanas, good evening. Yes, sir. Uh, what I'd like to see happen uh, early next year uh, is uh, the Lion Hole, uh, you know, uh, several concerts. <phone rings> That's all. You would like to see you in concert next year, and I think this goes for the whole nation. And so I'd like you to put some thought into that, and let's get you live with a full band behind you or whatever, or a little string band, whatever you prefer. But we'd like to see a lion in concert in 92. I will make every effort to satisfy. And perhaps you can give them. We'll take one more caller from Arima. Good evening, Arima. Uh, good, good evening. Uh, let me say that I, I must congratulate the Roaring Lion. I, I wish to mirror a statement made by an earlier caller to say that they must give people like Roaring Lion and not only a doctorate, but, well, I don't know what else. What else, other, other, other superior accolade is, is there for him? I congratulate Roaring Lion and I wish that he can go on and on. I would really like to have his autobiography. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. Well, maybe at his show next year. Well, let's see if we can give them a taste of one of the tunes that you'll give them at your concert next year, the Caroline. Well, I mean, wonderful. You can't do that sitting down. <laughs> no, I think, 